Hi, Dave. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good, thank you. And you? Thanks a lot. Um, we are talking about an application. You called me and uh, yeah, t tell me more about that application to understand what, what's going on. Well, firstly, I, uh, the new recruit from ITC, the new lady recruit from ITC, uh, got an opportunity to run a 63mm diameter. Uh, turns out the application was on aluminium. Okay. That's a customer where the biz the, there's no business at the moment, so there's an opportunity to go up against um, an R220 uh, style cutter with four inserts. Just an uh, aluminium plate on a Mazak machine, uh, 530C, I think the machine. So not massive horsepower, 40 international spindle, but 12,000 RPM nonetheless. Sounds good. Is it just aluminium? I mean, the opportunities in aluminium usually are not very interesting because of the potential business we, we have behind. Well, the consumption for aluminium is low. Okay, so the guy might machine 20 of these plates per year. But he needed a good sidewall finish and also wanted a good surface finish on this particular job because it's a tooling plate, so it's critical on tolerance. Okay, okay. Well, we have some, some um, opportunities on products we, we could use there. But um, maybe, is it only aluminium what they are doing there, or they do they other materials as well? No, there's other materials. The, the machine stainless steels, the machine plastics as well. It's their own component, and they, they do products for the food industry. Okay. So we're talking stainless. It sounds very interesting. What do you think about if we, we just don't use a pure 100% aluminium only tool, if we, we use a tool which can make more than just aluminium and uh, make, make a change uh, just not replacing the same insert with the same concept. That that works perfectly fine because because they're wanting to machine more than one material. They need a universal cutter. There's no point in them having, as they've got now, a dedicated aluminium tool, a dedicated stainless tool. If they have one tool that does everything, that's going to be better for the shop. Well, then then we have really a good opportunity because we have this new VSM 89012 cutter, which has aluminium inserts or stainless inserts or steel inserts, okay. so it would be extremely universal and it provides a wonderful surface quality. What, what do you think we, we, we should, can, can we test this, this insert? Well, yeah, um, already we have, we, we've put that tool forward um, to ITC. They've ordered a 63mm diameter tool for us to go in and demonstrate that particular that would uh, be great. There's a, there's a very nice aluminium insert yeah. available and we have eight cutting edges compared to the competition with two. That would be a, a very nice opportunity to really run the tool and upgrade the customer tool to a next level of it. Indeed, the insert that they're using at the moment on this al aluminium application is a VPGT. Yeah. So large insert, heavy costs involved, cost per edge could be quite significant. And the saving with an eight edge tool obviously okay. is going to be much, much better. Okay. Th then let's go for a test and to see what the results are. Okay, let's do it. Thanks a lot. Uh, no, that'll be that'll it will have, I think we did three parts of it.
saw again because I'll just go. Okay, good to go. Check it out on the corner. Okay, well, as close as you can. That's all right. I just that really shows it. Hi Mike. Good to see you again. How, yeah. How, how was the test yesterday with, with, with our VSM 819? Well, we, walking onto the shop floor we faced a, an immediate challenge. The guy, the manager that we met, okay, was very up for the task, get the tool on the machine. The guy that was running the machine is used to the tooling that he's always used and didn't think that anything was going to beat it or you know, be better than it. So we, we got a bit of a negative with the guy. Okay. And what he was thinking about our tool when he's seeing that? Yeah, because, it's, because the tool's a universal tool, and the one that he's using on this particular job is just an aluminium tool, he couldn't see how, it would, how the aluminium insert would work in a, in a general purpose tool until we explained we've got dedication for aluminium, we've got dedication for stainless, we've got dedication for metal, for steels. So he, he was thinking, though we cannot achieve surface quality or the the the, the, the result he's needing on his workpiece. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, but then we were running the tests, and um, what 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 kind of uh, speed and feed we were taking in? Well, it was difficult to start with. It is, is running the, the spindle flat out. It's twelve thousand rpm spindle, and the guys running at twelve thousand rpm. Um, we didn't really need to run at that. We didn't need to get that. To uh, the, the revolutions to get the surface finished. Why? We'd, we'd got more teeth in our cutter okay. for a start, so there were more inserts. So we, the, the cutter we've got has got four inserts in, ours has got seven. So immediately we can reduce the RPM, so the machine's not running flat out for a start, again saving the machine. Oh, that's cool, yeah. And uh, then, then we were running the tool, and uh, I think we're, what we're, we're starting with the surface we have to, uh, to machine. Yeah. The, Surface on a on a 90 degree tool is always challenging because of the clearance underneath the tool. Okay, um, we took a roughing pass uh, and then we ended up taking a finisher, which in reality shouldn't work always. Point one on depth of cut on depth of cut as a surface finish. Point three five feet per rev. So you've got low contact area with the insert. It's literally a polishing pass. That's Unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. The rule book said don't. The rule book says don't do that. But in reality, the guy at this point we'd got him interested. The machinist was interested. He wanted to work with us, and he said, "What if?" So, like any engineer, we said, "Okay, go for it." Yeah, cool. And then we, we, we were running on the on the side walls, I guess. Yes. Yeah. And how how was that? The <laughs> the surface finish on roofing was good. The guy wanted to try a surface finish. It, Normally would run a, a solid carbide tool around the yep. periphery of the job. I mean, the job was about sort of 50 mil deep, there around, uh, there about. Um, and we, I just said to him, look, let's just back the feed off a little, keep the RPM and the VC the same, and let's see what surface fin finish it achieves. And it was like glass. I got the guy to run a verdict clock, uh, measurement clock, down the sidewall. It didn't move. We're talking a tenth clock here. The the needle on the clock didn't move. I then got him to move a linear motion. It didn't move either. So not only was there no movement vertically, there was no movement laterally either. And normally you would get undulations in the surface Very from good. any tool that rotates. Very good. How many steps did we take down on the sidewalk? Uh, well, we took uh, eight mil depth of pass for finishing. Okay. Okay. Um, so. We were left with sort of 50 mil plate, 10 mil on the table, so 40 mil. And so that's cool. So I guess uh, he's interested in buying that tool. Definitely. So much Great. so that now we've got another application to go back in and run it on a stainless job. Wonderful. 
Yeah, thank you very much for that. No let's, problem. Let's let's go ahead and let's do it. Do the do the business. Okay.